short of a Sweet 16 birth may have been hard for any Memphis fan to watch. But if you watched, it was almost undeniable that the team we were witnessing last night was much, much different from any team that we've seen in the past eight years. And this is why. Take a listen. The highs of having the number one recruiting class. It is a new day in the city of Memphis. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. And the lows of, well, almost everything else. Usually when adversity has hit this season, the, the, the negative guys go, to, go the opposite way. If anyone gets COVID on the team that's not vaccinated, then all the un unvaccinated players are in that pool. We don't have our full roster. Y'all know we don't have our full roster. Stop asking me stupid questions. In hindsight, all seem like necessary steps for the Memphis Tigers to return to the Memphis basketball culture. Ever since I've been a coach in AAU, I've always been a storm chaser. I've always been the guy that chased all the tough teams in AAU in high school. After making it to the second round of a tournament that Memphis hasn't seen since 2014, instead of chasing the storm, Penny may have just weathered the biggest one. I hope that this shows people that Memphis is back. The real Memphis basketball to where we were in prominence, you know, years ago, um, we're, we're getting it back to where it needs to be. Maybe the early season adversity showed the Tigers how relentless they are, winning 13 of their last 16, defeating every ranked team they faced this season. Except for the finale. Up against the country's best team, one of their leading scorers in foul trouble, half of the lineup gassed, yet they still competed to the final second. Falling to Gonzaga, but rising to the occasion. The way we fought back through all the adversity we had, losing, you know, all the media, you know, talking bad on our team. So when I look back on this season, I can be proud, but for sure, when the buzzer rung, I was heartbroken. That's Memphis, heartbroken, but proud.